Great. Good. Welcome everybody to our multi-nation team call. We're so glad you joined us tonight. You're in for a huge treat tonight with Bethany Jones and her awesome lineup of speakers on her team. And um, just before I throw it to you, Bethany, just a few quick announcements. The team retreat. Um, if you have not registered for that, registration will go up June 15th, which is, I don't know, what is that, Wednesday, Thursday? This week, three days. So get registered if you haven't already. That is not a not miss retreat because Bethany's speaking, um, Heidi Ness, Basamba, so many others, Lori Funk, Stacy, myself, an a RVP VP panel, RVP MVP panel. So it's just going to be a lot of great training, not to mention rubbing shoulders with. Um, everybody so get registered for that impact tours they start august 13th through september 24th find one near you you can go on to the source and um there will be right when you log on to the source there's a bar that says impact tours and it'll give all the dates and the locations for those jump on june is going on this is a great excuse to um touch base with your preferred clients if they all prefer clients who signed up prior to June, if they place a 150 order, they get the uh, pick a free product from the pre product list. And it's the same free product list that we use uh, for our presentations. So that's a great excuse to call your um, preferred clients. And then um, next Sunday night, don't miss next Sunday, don't miss any Sunday night. But we are still having a team call, even though it's Father's Day, because our team calls later in the evening. MVP, new MVP, Amy Hazelton will be the guest speaker. So she's awesome. She just went nation and just, she's just awesome. So don't miss that. So Bethany, that's all the announcements. Stacy, do you have anything? No, no announcements. Okay, Bethany, throw it to you. All right. Thanks, Melanie. Hang on here. All right. Hello, everybody. Good evening. I'm happy to be here tonight with you guys. I, um, I wanted to talk tonight about building belief and give you guys some practical tips and some verbiage. And I also wanted you guys to hear from some of my leaders on my team, some of my up and coming regional vice presidents here in the next year. Can't wait. So exciting. There's a lot of them coming up. So, but I want to talk to you guys about belief tonight. And if you've been in Arbonne for any amount of time, you've probably heard the phrase, belief has a sound. And if I would be honest with you, when I first heard that, I was really frustrated by that. Because <laughs> I'm like, what the heck does that mean? Belief? How does that have a sound? I mean, what does that even mean? So when I first heard that, it was kind of frustrating to me. And so, um, but I want to tell you that at this point in my journey, I can tell you with 1000% assurance that belief really indeed does have a sound and I've heard it. Um, and it's funny because it's a beautiful thing when you hear it because there's nothing else like it. Um, and it's a really even a better thing to watch it take place in somebody's life and their, in their business because there is such a shift in the way that they talk um, and so it really does have a sound. So I want to talk to you guys tonight a little bit about a few ways that you can build belief. And before I hear, before I ask my, my girls to talk tonight, I'm going to give you guys a couple tips. So the very first one is, uh, Mel I asked Melanie, I was like, what do you want me to talk about? Is there anything specific? And she was like, you know, one of the things you can, you can mention is talk about when people want to get started. Just don't wait. Just go ahead and get started. Get out of the gate right away. So uh, how many of you guys have had somebody say, well, I want to do this business, but um, I'm going to wait until next month to do my launches, or I'm going to wait until the summer, or give me a couple of weeks uh, while things settle down. Let me just tell you guys, there's never, ever a perfect time. I mean, it, life is always busy, always. <laughs> um, there's always something going to be going on. So if you're excited about this business and you're ready to roll, don't wait another three weeks to do your ribbon cuttings or your launch parties or anything like that. Just do it now. So I have a funny example. Um, there was a gal that came onto my team. Uh, it was about a year and a half ago. And um, it was right around the time when we first learned about doing three-way calls to invite guests and all that business. And she got signed up and decided she wanted to do this in December. 
And so literally, we picked two launch dates that were about seven and 10 days out. And they were the week before Christmas. Stacey probably remembers this. Um, and we did these three-way calls to invite these guests to a launch party, her ribbon cutting party, that was a week before Christmas. And we gave them like seven days notice. And let me just tell you that she went district in one month. In December that month she went district in one month and people came to those parties so sometimes um, shorter notice is actually better so I know sometimes people will be like well I want to I want to book a party but I don't want to do it until like six weeks away because every one of my friends is busy right now well guess what not everybody's gonna be able to come to your party anyway so just pick a date and go for it and frankly if you tell people you know three or four days in advance or a week ahead Hey, I'm doing an awesome party. I can't wait. You should come. It's next week. It's going to be so much fun. If you give them a short amount of time, people are less likely to forget or put something on their calendar or anything like that. So I'm just saying, if you want to do this or you have somebody that you're launching, encourage them to do it sooner than later. In fact, I've had other people come in and they had to do all their research and do all their stuff and learn everything before they got in. And, um, they told me later in hindsight, they were like, you know, the biggest regret I have is that I didn't start sooner because really I just delayed my paycheck. So, so take that for what it's worth. But um, I really believe that I have a sense of excitement, a sense of urgency. It's really, I mean, this business is important to you. So you want to communicate that and to your people that you're inviting. And so I want to say a word about three-way calls for a minute. Somebody messaged me um, today today or yesterday, I can't remember, um, if, if I still do three-way calls to invite guests to launches and ribbon cuttings. And I said, well, yes, I do, because they work. <laughs> and so let me just kind of give you guys, because some of you might be afraid to use that method. So I want to give you a little verbiage that I use when I do three-way calls with my people. So you have a brand new consultant um, launching. And they are hesitant because honestly having surprising someone on the phone or getting them on the phone it seems a little awkward it seems a little pushy to them it might seem weird so i'm a really big believer in just calling out the truth and being being honest and so when we get on the phone it goes a little something like this you know they'll be like hey sally um i'm you might have heard i'm getting started in my arm on business and i'm really excited but i have my friend bethany on the line she's done this a lot longer than i have and she's helping me get started so she has a quick question for you. Um, well, first she'd ask if they have a minute, and then we'd go into that. And so then I would say, as the sponsor, or the sideline, the upline, whatever, the person helping them with the three-way calls, I say, hey, Sally, I know this is awkward. Nice to meet you on the phone. It's like a party on the phone. I just say it. I know this is weird, but this is like a party on the phone. It's so nice to meet you. And they'll laugh, and it kind of puts them at ease. And then I'll just say, hey, listen, um, you know, Elena's first, she's getting started in her business. I've been in a lot longer. This is how we help our new people get started, just to help teach and train them on how to do this. That kind of takes all their guard down. They're like, oh, okay, she's helping to train her. Oh, well, what a nice thing to do. And so then, um, and then I'll say something like, listen, she's doing two big, fun, brand new ribbon cuttings for her business. They're going to be Thursday night and Saturday morning which one do you think you could come to? We're looking for friendly faces to come and support her. And then they'll be like, oh, well, you know, I can't do it Thursday, but I think I could come on Saturday. So that's kind of what a three-way call looks like. I'm just telling you that because I want you to understand that it's not really that weird. And if you feel weird, just, just tell them. I know this is kind of weird, but it's like a party on the phone. And then I, they all kind of laugh and they're like, oh, okay, well, yeah, this is weird, but all right, what do you need? So um, that's kind of how we handle it. And so that's how we do it. So get started right away. That's what I have to say about that. Um, the second point I wanted to say is kind of along the same lines is get into activity, you guys. Um, hitting your 2,500 building block really should be a no brainer if you're in activity. So we talked a lot about the 2,500 building block. I actually did a quick uh, clip for my team, um, how to use the 2,500 building block and what that looks like. Uh, I can post it up for you guys if you want. It is done with uh, my daughter's Beanie Boos because I don't have enough people in my house to hold up signs, but, but it gets the message across. You can kind of visually see how it works. But the 2,500 building block, you guys think about it. We teach people to get in front of 40 people a month. 
you know, put 40 people in your funnel a month. We did a call about that, how to put 40 people in your funnel. I did that primarily by having a full calendar of get togethers or parties or whatever you want to call them, happy, healthy hours, yada, yada. I did that with group presentations um, because that really time leverages really well and you get into other people's circles. So you're not just stuck talking to your friends and family all the time because, you know, there's, you, you reach your end pretty quickly if you're just talking to your friends and family. So you want to get into other people's circles. So I did that with group presentations. So 40 people in my funnel. Just think about that for a second. If you really are an activity with a full calendar, you have 40 people in your funnel every month, and even just a fourth of them, let's say just 10 of them, buy an ASVP package that month, whether that's an RE9 set or a 30 days to healthy living set, just 10. If just 10 of those people did that, you already surpassed your 2,500 building block. So it really is kind of a numbers game. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science. It's not. Um, it's just getting in front of enough people and putting the gift out there. So I challenge my team personally, we have a challenge on our team every single month to hit your 2,500 building block by the 15th. Um, and we do that because I know that if somebody is hitting their building block by the 15th, then they will like 99.9% .9 of the time bonus that month, um, their central district, which means they are always growing a strong business. So what we do for our team, um, we call it a champion's breakfast. And if they hit the 2,500 building block by the 15th, then if they're local to me, I take them out to breakfast. Or if they're not local, I send them a gift card to somewhere that you know they could go where they're at. So that's a really kind of a fun little incentive. It doesn't have to be big. I mean, going out to breakfast, if you want to do that with your team, I mean, going out to breakfast is what, 10 bucks maybe, 15 bucks max. But it's a really fun time to connect with your people and to just reward them for doing a great job of what they're supposed to be doing. So we do that. Um, I can't tell you how many people have told me as far as activity goes well, you know, you just have the personality for this business, or you're so good at parties, or, you know, your Facebook posts are amazing, blah, 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 blah. And I just want to say in response to that, you guys, um, you know, it's really a matter of practicing. <laughs> Do you know how many parties I've done in the last three and a half years? A lot. <laughs> like a lot, probably hundreds. So I'm just saying, you know, once you do enough, um, it's really not that hard. You would probably be able to do it in your sleep. I mean, my 11-year-old can probably do an Arbonne party. She's been to enough with me. Um, I mean, how many times have I practiced my why when I'm driving in the car to go to a party? Just about every party I've been to. Uh, how many times have I practiced it in front of my kids? A lot. Uh, to the couch cushions? Many times. I mean, I've just practiced. It's not, I mean, you can get, your skills can get better if you just practice. It's not, it's like anything in life, like um, Jerry Rosenthal said, it's like riding a bike. You just don't get up and ride a bike one day. Like, it takes a little bit of practice and time. Same thing, like, it just takes some practice. I tell, I always follow Stacey's example and say, you know, you need to read your script seven times before you go do a party. Well, my, one of my girls, Rebecca, says, no, I tell my people to read it 14 because maybe then they'll read it seven because you guys, you have to read it. You cannot go to a party and expect to do an awesome job if you read over that script one time. You just can't. I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna be a little awkward for everybody, including you, which will probably be a little embarrassing. So just read it, go over it, practice it to whoever will listen or to your cat or your cushions or whatever, I don't care. Um, as far as Facebook goes, I know I've had other people message and say, what's your system? What's your social media system? And um, so I want to hit on that for just a second because I don't actually have a system. Um, you know, the best thing I can tell you is another thing that used to drive me crazy. Stacy would always say, follow your tug. Follow your tug. You guys, I do. What I post on Facebook is my life. I tell my story and I follow my tug. If I'm feeling passionate about something, like this morning, like heavy on my heart was like, man, my inner circle has shifted over the past few years because I have dreams and desires and goals, and the people that are not feeding into that, I mean, I haven't cut them out of my life. They're still my friends, and I still see them sometimes and talk to them, but 
Do I talk to them every single day? I don't. But the people that are in line with my dreams and my desires and my focus and that are speaking life to me, those have become my inner circle. So I just posted something about that this morning and everyone's like, that's amazing. I'm like, well, that's really truly my passion today. Like that's heavy on my heart. So I shared it. Um, but I just am saying, you know, as far as Facebook goes, tell the story of your life. And Arvon is a part of my life. I mean, we use Arvon all the time. And so if I can weave that into the story of my life on Facebook, I do because it's part of my life. I love it. I'm passionate about it. It's something that I absolutely love. So I share it. Same thing with my kids. I love them. So I share them. So anyway, um, okay, back to my notes here. Um, uh, okay. So yeah. Okay. So here's another funny thing. I, one day I think I'm going to do a training on all about, um, in spite of me, <laughs> this business work, um, God can, you know, because I'll just tell you, I did everything wrong probably in the beginning. It was funny because I was talking to someone the other day and they were like, there's another RVP. I think we went region around the same time. And she's like, now, how do you get people in activity? Because we promoted using a lot of um, packages and this and that. And I said, well, the funny thing is, is I didn't even use business builder packages until after I went region. Now I can see that it's an amazing tool. It sure would have helped us probably go region faster had I actually offered people the tools they actually needed. But um, I'll just say, I really think um, that it's, I, even if you do everything wrong, I mean, I didn't even close a party for the first year and a half. I was too afraid to ask for the sale. I mean, how lame is that? I would do the whole party and be like, okay, well, if anybody needs anything, just let me know. I mean, it was so awkward for everybody. So I'm just saying I educated myself. When the opportunities came for me to understand and educate um, myself on how to close better, then I learned it. I poured myself into learning that and to doing better. And I did. When I, when I understood the importance and how to use business builder packages, I learned it and then I used it. So like you, you can hone your skills and you can get better at things. It's all about, you know, practicing and practicing and practicing, learning better, learning new things. But you guys, it's not rocket science. It's not. I mean, you do not have to have a rocket science degree to do Arbon. <laughs> you really don't. So if you aren't doing something, it, oh, that's another thing when I did the close. You aren't doing something to someone, you're offering a gift. And so when I had that shift, then I was like not afraid to do the close. So there's a lot of things. Another thing too. Okay, this is funny because someone else was like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing at your Zoom presentations, blah, blah, blah. You guys do stuff all the time. And I was like, you guys, I didn't even know how to use Zoom until like six months ago. Shondi had to walk me through because I didn't even know what I was doing. I, don't, I am not a technological expert. My husband will be the first to tell you I'm not. <laughs> but I'll just say I learned it and I learned it by practicing at like 11 o'clock at night with some of my random friends who might be in their pajamas and we just got on and practiced, um, you know, screen sharing and everybody, whatever, all that kind of stuff. I am not an awesome technological genius, but I learned and I taught myself how to do it. So, you know, the last six months have been great. We've learned a lot of things on how to do, how to use Zoom and stuff like that. Voxer, I didn't even know how to use Voxer until like right before GTC. That has changed our whole entire team dynamic. It's been amazing. Um, Vimeo, how to upload videos to Vimeo. Are you kidding me? Janine had to help me with that one because I didn't know what I was doing. So all I'm saying is you don't have to be a genius. All you have to do is get into activity just do it. Melanie, I think Melanie is the one that says, this is a learn as you earn business. You don't have to know everything. Just get into activity. You have a sponsor and an upline for a reason, and they're here to help you learn as you earn. So um, I wanted to have a couple of my girls talk tonight. Um, let me find you guys on here. Uh, I wanted, I have three girls that I wanted to have talk just because I have these specifically people, I've watched them shift and I can now actually hear the belief in their voice. And there's been a tremendous shift in their, the way that they're talking, the way that they're doing their business, tremendous shift. So Lauren, I wanted to have Lauren talk first. She um, 
we met uh, at doing hall monitor duty during our homeschool co-op, <laughs> which is really funny. We we're supposed to be monitoring the halls and said we talked about Arbonne for like three hours. But it was really fun. And so she actually signed up and moved away to Charlotte two hours away from me and then just used Arbonne for like a year or so. And then came was watching me that year as I earned my Mercedes and all of that jazz. And she was like, all right, what's this all about? I think I want to get involved in this. So January, she actually birthed her district and a brand new baby at the same time, her third baby, her surprise. And, um, and so I wanted to have her talk because I, she launched somebody here in Asheville yesterday. I helped her and I just was listening to her talk. And there is a lot that has shifted in the last couple of months. A lot of belief has been built and the way that she was talking, it was, it was really awesome for me to hear. I was like, oh my gosh, it's happening. So Lauren, I'm going to pin you so you can talk. Um, if you want to unmute yourself, you get, there you go. Yay, share with us. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Bethany. And um, yeah, so when Bethany asked me to talk about kind of my shift in belief tonight, um, I guess the first thing that came to my mind is I've had several shifts along the way that she spoke of, um, my shift into um, signing up with Arbonne and then going from just the discount to wanting to work the business. And um, here recently, in the past several months, um, my biggest shift is, um, I believe it went from, I think this could possibly work to, um, my confidence in knowing that this can work. Um, and it's so funny because, um, let's see every um, year I always have a word of the year and, um, I just pray about it before each year, like in December every year. And it's amazing to watch the journey that God takes me on every year uh, when I do that. Um, surprisingly enough, I don't know why I just prayed about my word. And um, I kept having the feeling that my word this year should be believe. It's funny. Um, but anyway, um, so it's just been exciting to see where he's taken me with that. So I'm um, actually, um, I just found this too this evening. Um, and kind of thinking about what I would tell you guys, but um, I guess I'll be really vulnerable and share with you what's in my, my little journal here. So, um, <laughs> so usually I start the year out with what um, I put for the uh, the uh, definition of it. So first of all, and I won't try to take up too long. Let me read through this real quick, and then I'll tell you kind of recently the shift. But so to believe means to accept something as true and feel sure of the truth of it, um, or to hold something as an opinion, think, or suppose. So um, a couple of months ago, or I guess five months ago now, I had all those sleepless nights, and I was messaging Bethany for a book to read um, in the middle of the night because I couldn't sleep. And so she um, mentioned that The Dream Giver would be a good book. So I wrote in here um, my dream. So I said, um, it's funny how God has stirred in me recently desire to pay attention to um, the seed he planted in me um, to be what God has uh, called me to be and designed me to be in the dream he's given. Um, I had lots of dreams when I was younger about what I wanted to become and goals I wanted to reach, but it seems as life goes on, dreams can be put on a shelf and forgotten. Um, I had become somewhat discouraged that I never pursued a dream after college. Life happens. Um, but when Jason found out this fall that his company was going to be sold again, I knew I had to do something that would help with the financial security of our family. How many more corporate job losses could our family endure without me not working? Um, I love my degree in health and exercise science, and I enjoy helping others. Um, I have been introduced to Ar the Arbonne opportunity. I've always loved the idea of working from home so that I continue, can continue to take care of my family. I enjoy my role as a wife and mother, and I also have a competitive spirit that helps me to excel in many things I try to do. I'm a hard worker, and I realize that God has given me the dream of excelling at Arbonne. I want to become a um, national MVP for Arbonne. I love the challenge, but most of all, I'm thrilled about how many people I could help if I run after my dream. I would help our family, not only now, but for generations to come. I would help other families and help improve many people's quality of life. Awesome job. I love it. 
but there is one overwhelming challenge. I am not capable on my own. I don't have the words to speak on my own. I mess things up on my own. But God, he is all powerful. He planted this dream in me and is more than capable of helping me achieve it. I can do this. I will have challenging days. I will have, have to face my fears, speaking, saying the wrong things, not knowing quite how to organize things. But God is on my side. Since I have so little power of doing this on my own, it is an even bigger opportunity for God's greatness to shine. To him be the glory now along the way. And when I achieve my dream, he has given me um, for his glory. And I put amen. Okay, so that was my um, little journal entry. And um, so that's what kind of started my year off. And by the way, a few weeks ago, um, I don't know where it came from, but I prayed for courage. So I'm assuming that that's where this is coming from tonight, because otherwise I would not in a million years have ever been able to tell anyone this. So anyway, um, this is my little prayer of courage. But I'll have to tell you that I think my huge shift has come from um, staying committed, Um, because it's so easy initially um, when you're not seeing um, the results that other consultants are, you know, seeing, and you're like, oh, well, so-and-so is doing such a great job. What in the world is she doing? I don't know anybody who would say yes, or I'm scared to ask people to buy something. And you have all these fears that well up inside of you. But I have to tell you that, you know, I'm sure along the way, somebody asked you, um, do you want to be in a different place in five years? Or do you want to stay where you're at? And every one of you who signed up, said yes to wanting to be somewhere different in five years. You didn't want to stay in the same place that you're in. And so um, in that, I'm saying, you know, don't quit and stay committed to what you've been called to do. Um, okay. okay, so here's the thing that has changed it for me, is watching everyone um, who I have been cultivating. I say cultivating because it's not like you show up to parties many times. Look. Well, this does happen. I guess it does sometimes. But for me, um, it seems like there's a lot of cultivation and you have to be patient with people. And once you are, you get to see the fruits of that. And that's what I'm seeing now um, for people who I never in a million years would have thought that they would have done, said yes to the clean eating challenge or said yes to the business um, or yes to putting you know clean products on their skin. But they did. And um, just some amazing, amazing life changes and people that I love. Um, one of my friends who has had a ringing in her ear for years, years and years and years, the ringing has completely gone away. Um, she is uh, 55 years old and taking care of actually raising um, children who are my older children's ages, um, 8 and 11. And she runs circles around those 25-year-olds. I mean, she is raising the two children, running a business, and is telling everybody how much energy energy she has and has several people that want to do the Clean Eating Challenge now. And so um, it's just amazing because she's not one of the people who initially said yes to it. She was like, well, I eat healthy anyway. I just don't know if I want to spend the money on it. But you know what? She eventually said yes. And if I had not stayed committed, I would not have seen the fruit of that. And um, I could give you several other examples, but um, I think one of the things uh, that made me so excited is in the beginning, you hear all these stories that other consultants tell you about, and it takes those stories to get you excited, but um, stay committed because you're going to have your own stories too eventually, and they will help you to know that this thing is for real. It's so much bigger than ourselves, and um, it is helping people. and um anyway I don't know that's I think my two biggest things it's awesome thank you Lauren I love it I love it yes when I heard her this weekend I was like the shift has happened she's not afraid of comfort anymore because she has seen people um people's lives change because of because she kept offering anyway thank you Lauren you're welcome Okay, I want to ask Elena to share for a minute. And Elena uh, and I also met through our homeschool co-op. It's funny because all three of us were actually like semi-intertwined, but they signed up at different times. It was totally random. But anyways, Elena kind of signed up just because I was like, this is a good idea. And she was like, okay. And then she pretty much talked herself right out of it. And I was like, I'm so sad because I, I love her and I know what this could mean for her and her family. And so I was like, Oh my gosh, she's, she quit. 
I mean, I'm, I'm sad, but, um, but six months later, she came back and here she is. <laughs> so Elena, share your story with us. Okay. Thank you, Bethany. Um, yeah, I say Bethany tricks me into jo joining Arbonne. Um, because <laughs> she, um, I did the clean eating challenge. This is two years ago. I did the clean eating challenge in April. Did I do it in April? Yeah, I did it in April. Um, and so I had a party and two people showed up to the party and um, both of them, because I was raving about how great my results were, both of them and their husbands um, did the clean eating challenge. So I had signed up to get the discount and Bethany <laughs> messages me and was like, hey, um, uh, you've got you're in, if you want them to be under you, you would be in qualification for district. And so I was like, oh, okay, whatever that is, yeah, I'll do that. Um, <laughs> so I started thinking about Arbonne and the opportunity. And um, I mean, my husband is a pastor. Um, he does that full time, and he also is um, in pest control full time. And neither one of those businesses are incredibly lucrative. <laughs> Um, so, and it's always, um, been important for both of us that I stay at home. We have three little girls and I stay at home with them and take care of them, um, which two of them are in school now. So, but anyway, so, um, at that time it was tight and it's still really tight. Um, so we were looking at maybe putting my then two year old in daycare. Um, and so when I thought about that, I, like I was, I about broke down in tears and I don't cry easily. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do Arbonne. Um, and from there, I was a freaking roller coaster up and down. Arbonne is awesome. This business works. Nobody's going to buy anything from me. Nobody's going to join my team. Um, and it was constant up and down. And Bethany loved me so much and just enjoyed listening to my constant struggles. Um, <laughs> but I never fully committed. I never fully committed. I went to, I drove from here, from Asheville, North Carolina, to Oklahoma, to their team retreat. Um, what was that, 13 hours? I don't know, it was long. Um, it was much longer on the way back, I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> but after a retreat, you know, you, ha you have these moments. I don't know if anybody um, is new in the business or if you've been in the business for a while and you experienced the roller coaster like I was. Um, but after a retreat, I was like, you know what? Next year, I'm going to be up on that stage on the RVP panel. I will be a region. And I was like set in it. But I came home and was still Miss Roller Coaster up and down. Um, and it was just constant. And it was exhausting. And it was sucking the life right out of my body. So um, I told Bethany I was going to take a break. Um, but really, I was thinking I will never be back. <laughs> um, but I, I loved Arbonne. I loved the people. I loved the community. But it was just sucking the life out of my body because because of me because of my constant head trash um so I took a break and in that time um I realized that I was kind of floating through life I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that I mean I've had times in life where I felt like I was drowning I've had times where I felt like I was doing awesome but I'm I was just in a stage where I was floating and I was in survival mode and it was just you know, keep the kids alive and try not to ruin them and go to bed and do it all again the next day, you know? And I just realized God has more for me than that. Um, so I started spending some focused time in devotion and focused time in prayer. And one of my friends recommended um, a book by Renee Brown, and I remember Bethany was all about Daring Greatly. So I started reading Daring Greatly. So I'm on this quest to find, you know, what are God's gifts that he's given me? What am I going to do with my life? What does he want me to do with my life? Um, so as all of this is like boiling around in my mind, uh, everybody's at GTC. And I'm getting really jealous of everybody at GTC because they're posting all these amazing conversations and all these amazing speeches by these amazing women. And um, it was just like constantly in my face because I'm still on the team pages and I'm still friends with everybody that I was friends with on our, uh, in Arbonne. Um, and it's like all of a sudden God brought everything together with me because I had this moment of, you know what? There are incredible women um, and, and men, but whatever, um, <laughs> incredible men and women, people in Arbonne. Um, and I want to be around those people. I want to learn from those people. I want to become one of those people. And I want to help others become one of those people. And it was just like God said, 
you are looking for something that's right in front of your face. This is your this is your goal. This is your the conduit that I'm going to use you through. Um, and I you know I thought back. Um, my husband, like I said, he's a lead pastor at a small church plant now. Um, but we used to be at a different church, and um, we worked with singles. And I was constantly like pouring into their lives and leading small groups and stuff. And that's you know I don't do that anymore. Um, and I miss it. So it was just this moment of this is how you can help people. And I realized I'm not super made, motivated by money. Um, not that I don't like stuff because I do like stuff, but, um, <laughs> but as much as we needed more money and still need more money, um, that wasn't making me, that wasn't getting me out of bed in the morning. That wasn't pushing me to have conversations with people. It wasn't pushing me to pick up the phone. Um, it wasn't enough for me to be uncomfortable. But when you have a greater purpose, when you see what Arbonne can do for people and what Arbonne can do for you and it, what a, what a, I mean, it's just about growth and uh, in all aspects of life, it, it, it impacts everything. So once I realized that, I'm, I was like, this is it. I'm ready to make phone calls because it's not about me. It's about what God can do through me. So, um, and I, I want to create a legacy. I don't want my little girls seeing me floating through life. And I just want other people to, um, I mean, I've got stuff to give. And I want other people to experience that too and realize their full potential. So um, I'm done waiting. And I just, uh, people need and deserve this business and it's selfish not to share it. So when I finally got to that point, um, I'm done being selfish. And, you know, if you have a small why, it needs to grow and do whatever you can. Read whatever you can, read high on our bonds, join every single team call because when your why grows, then that pushes you to um, get out of your comfort zone and do what you got to do. So, that's I it. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it, Elena. Thank you. Yes. I mean, the what I've watched Elena grow into, and I'm sure even more, is it's like, I mean, this is the most amazing thing. I'm just saying like now I can understand why everyone's like, okay, getting your own Mercedes is great. But when you hand those keys to somebody, that's like even better because you guys, it's not even just about the car. It's about everything. The culmination of the journey that has gotten somebody there. That is a beautiful thing to watch. It's absolutely beautiful. So anyway, okay. The last person I wanted to have share is Rebecca and uh, Rebecca and I have known each other before we were married and had kids, we actually uh, met teaching English in Japan when we were young and, and fresh and naive. <laughs> and so, and, and rested, we slept then. But anyways, over the years, um, we've stayed friends. I love her. She's one of, um, you know, when you say you have people that come alongside of you that can speak into your life and vice versa, like, I know that I can call Rebecca and I know that she will pray for me and I know that she will speak life to me and I know that she'll tell me, you know, this is right. This is not, but, um, but let's go and do, and do this journey together. Like I will walk alongside of you. And so I love her and I will say that there's a lot of roller coaster ride with Rebecca <laughs> a lot. Stacy's like, this might be a time for a crucial conversation. And I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do that. I don't like confrontation. <laughs> but I will say, I mean, especially with one of your friends, like who wants to have that? But, but that was a big turning point. But I watched her, you know, that turning point, And I watched her go to GTC this year and come home from GTC and pull out the biggest month she's ever pulled in like what, the last two weeks. It was crazy. And, and from there, it's just, got, I mean, the, the sound of belief is there, and it's a definite change. So I just want her to share her shift. So, Rebecca. Yay! Oh, Bethany, thanks. Um, I think my favorite thing about first meeting Bethany is, um, for all of you who only know her on this side of the 2000s, <laughs> she used to be really spastic and really hyper. So just let that be known. She's super. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, yeah, I would love to share my shift. It was exciting actually, as I was looking through notes, um, from GTC, I was like, Oh, I can't do five minutes. I need to do my own trainings. And you know what? One of these days I will be. So I'm excited. I'm going to file some of these away and, and give some some good nuts and bolts but tonight I'll just share um, just that shift that I think changed um, there's a lot of different pieces that came into it 
Um, but I think what it was is it started on the airplane to get to Vegas. And um, I just kind of wrote down some key questions, like if for some reason at GTC, all these key questions could be answered, what are the questions? You know, and so for me, my questions were, why haven't I exploded more? We hear these stories. Look, Bethany just shared one. The girl became a district manager in a month. You know, like here I am year two and a half, I'm a district manager. You know, it's like, well, why haven't I? Because I do believe it works. So why haven't I exploded? Um, how can I create momentum when I'm, you know, one person or maybe two? You know, how do I create that momentum? What does that look like? Can, is it even possible? And, and can I even be doing more? I have five kids who I love. I have a tornado of a three-year-old who is still alive. Thank you, Jesus. And, <laughs> um, but I homeschool and um, I, there's just, there's a lot of, of priorities. I'm also a believer in Jesus. So I always want that my desire is to have those priorities in order. How does Arbon fit into that? How can I do more with it? But yet I didn't want it creeping up. I don't want it a subtle creeping of where I'm saying, oh, I'm doing this for you children as I'm yelling at them because I wanna spend more time on the computer and all they want is mommy's attention. You know, it's like, okay, wait a second. Like, who am I doing it for? You know. <laughs> um, so these were some of my questions I truly wanted answered um, if in my dream world, if I could have them answered at GTC. Um, so to make this a little brief, uh, key things that happened where I had a, um, well, the trainings were amazing. I just, I do have to say, um, I was, I was very impressed with the, the, the diversity of nuts and bolts and at the same time, big vision and product information. And anyway, that's a plug for GTC. Um, definitely it was, it was, it was truly equipping for the consultant on any level. Um, but I think for me, um, Oh, you had screen sharing. I, I don't think I touched anything. I don't know. I, oh. Do I know how to screen share? <laughs> what just oh, no, somebody else is screen sharing. Uh, I don't know who this is. Is it okay? Well, somebody else. Uh, it's Xperia Z. Xperia Z, you're screen sharing. Okay, anyway, <laughs> go ahead, Rebecca. We'll listen. Keep going. Anyway, it's okay. Um, so when we were up at Stacy's um, room at the MGM, I had a key conversation with Jill Pulver. Um, she's, I don't even know where she's at in terms of like, she's somehow we're all the same <laughs> sideline thing. Um, but she also is a homeschooler. She's a Christian mom, um, but she's also, she's beautiful. She's, she's normal <laughs> in my opinion. But anyway, we had this very key conversation where she asked me, she said, you know, why am I not seeing Arbonne as a vehicle? You know, and that's what we're talking about tonight. Um, and I would have agreed with her intellectually, but I thought, you know what? No, if she's picking up on this, why am, am I not seeing it as a vehicle? Um, to me, I felt it was, a, it, it was this tension, a conflicting, and she taught me these ideas of how I have conflicting in, intentions. On the one hand, I do, do want to do our math on, but the, the other hand, I'm feeling that it's, you know, I'm selling my soul to materialism, you know, and she, which she right away was like, you need to get rid of that story. And I was like, what? Um, what do you mean? Isn't that a good story? She's like, no, <laughs> it's a bad story. Um, so anyway, um, that was a really key conversation that, that got my mind open. But then I think the biggest, um, the biggest thing at GTC was, and it was just funny because whoever the speaker was, this was just a side note that she made, but she mentioned fear. And, and right away I peeked up because I'm like, okay, I'm constantly battling fear. So I'm like, okay, I'm listening. Um, and I actually listened to that and I started kind of going off on my own thoughts, but I thought, what am I afraid of? What is the fear? What fear is holding me back? And my biggest fear was people's ideas of me. For example, I cannot tell you how many times Bethany's asked me to speak on these things and we'll have a great conversation before. And then I get on and she's like, what happened to you? Why'd you talk so weird? You know, <laughs> like, why were you timid or, um, and it's because I'm thinking about you all and, you know, and what you're thinking of me. Um, and so that was the fear. Well, this lady mentioned, she said, the minute that you're thinking about what other people are thinking about you, you are no longer trying to love them. You're loving yourself. Okay, that was huge to me because that is a huge passion of mine is to love others through whatever means. You know, if it's my kid, if it's, you know, whoever it is to truly love them. And I thought, 
well, I don't want to not love someone, you know, so this was great for me. This is a red flag now for me to where I'm like, oh, if I'm thinking about, you know, the fact that whoever just left the meeting, did she leave the meeting because I'm boring? You know what I mean? Like, boom, what am I thinking about? I am not no longer thinking of you all. I'm thinking about Rebecca and then I'm not able to give. So this is, this has been the freedom. This has been the shift because it frees me when I'm at my parties. I'm not, oh, look, Laura Thompson left too. See, they're all, they're all bored. No, <laughs> Why do I look at that? No, um, you know, but it, it frees me to share the Arbonne, to share the business, to share the, um, to share the products, um, to just, it just, it frees me. You know, I haven't had the greatest month last month um, in terms of some of the activity. Now, had this been, you know, three months ago, I would have put myself right under the bus and been like, oh, I'm just terrible. Blah, blah. No, I'm not doing that because that's my red flag. When I'm starting to think about Rebecca, I am not serving anyone and actually including I'm not serving myself. Um, so guess, guess what happens? Well, the minute I get rid of caring all about what other people are thinking, I can see Arbonne as a business dun, 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 dun. <laughs> because it is one like, and it's a profitable one and it's great i mean now it's life-changing i also did a little bit of and this is what i thought oh this would be a great training for my team someday but um i think another key thing was i always call it helicoptering when you kind of lift out of your body and you stare at yourself don't be creeped out well you can be i don't care because <laughs> i don't care what you think about me but um, <laughs> I love you. Um, no, but to look down, I looked at my life and I thought, look at Rebecca, like look at myself before Arbonne and after Arbonne, just to even, to just tell myself the truth. Like what has this done for me? What has this business done? What has, you know, the, be, being a part of the culture done? Um, so that's, that's a side note. So main point summing up is for me, the big shift was to just get rid of that fear of what others think um, and to truly do what we talk about, to truly love. And you know what? I believe Jill Johnson Pulvert. It, she doesn't even tell me, think she knows I'm mentioning her, but it truly is a vehicle. It is a vehicle and we can use it for different things. I heard it tonight. I heard what you guys are wanting your vehicle to be. You know, all our vehicles might be different. I mean, the journey, the destination might be different, but the vehicle's the same. And Arbonne's awesome, you know? So anyway, thank you, Bethany. She does put up with it. I, I feel like Bethany, you know, she might feel things like this, okay? Because she, she's a human, she feels them like this. If you want to know Rebecca, I go like this. <laughs> <laughs> and Bethany hangs in there. So thanks, lady. I love you. Oh my gosh, I'm cracking up. Now you know why I love Rebecca so much. But yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I wanted them to share because I want you guys to know, I know when I was building from like district to area and area to region, Melanie and Susie asked me to train all the time because they're like, people want to hear from people that are in the trenches. And I was like, I'm still in the trenches. But I want you to hear from my people that are building right now from district to area and area to region because most of us are in that boat together. And so you guys, the shifts can happen for you just like it happened for them. I just wanna wrap up by telling you guys that, you know, the biggest thing is, is you have to build your belief because that belief is gonna come out and people are attracted to people that are going somewhere. You have to be bold. You can be bold and speak with conviction without being pushy. You really, truly can. I tell people all the time at parties, if I see somebody at a party that I want on my team, I tell them, you would be amazing at this business. I have no qualms saying that anymore, ever. I used to be af afraid to do that. I am not afraid anymore. Um, I had a conversation today with Elena, and she said, you know, I have a whole list of people that I want to talk to about the business. I'm going to start calling them tomorrow. And I said, you know what? That's a huge shift. You never said that to me before. Never. And I was like, I used to do it. I mean, I still do it. And I'll tell you what I do. Very honest and vulnerable with people. And I mean, I'm not afraid anymore. But when that fear was really big for me, I would call and be like, listen, I know that this is out of the blue. This is probably crazy. I feel really out of my comfort zone. In fact, I almost want to throw up right now. But I really cannot stop thinking that you would be amazing at this business. I really think you should take a look at it. I would say that because that's exactly how I felt. 
And once I put that on the table, people were like, oh my gosh, you don't have to be nervous. Oh, it's totally fine. Like, but for me to put it out on the table and just to put that honesty out there, it helped me to feel like I could actually do this. <laughs> so you guys, it's okay to speak with boldness and conviction. In fact, you have to if you want anybody to follow you on this journey and to join you. Um, passion comes through if you really believe. If you aren't getting bookings, you're either you're either not doing what you're supposed to do, like playing the booking game, or you aren't playing it with boldness and conviction. If you aren't getting sales, I'm going to say you either aren't closing or asking, or you aren't closing or asking with conviction. Um, if you aren't finding business builders, you either aren't in enough activity. I mean, if you're talking to five people a month, it's going to take a long time. <laughs> but if you're either not in activity, you aren't asking, or you're not asking with belief that this is the best business ever. Okay, so I just want to tell you to stop feeling bad, stop feeling worried or apologetic or anything about offering Arvon to people. This is a gift. And I know I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but if you guys can imagine this as a gift that you're setting on the table, your job is simply to put the gift on the table over and over and over and over again. Your job is not to decide what somebody does with that gift. Some people might leave it there. Some people might take out a lipstick. Some people might take out the clean eating challenge. Somebody, somebody might take the whole thing and run with it. But your job isn't to make that decision. Your job is to put the gift on the table. So um, I want to conclude with that. Um, that looks like, I feel like we've gone a lot over tonight, but I hope this was helpful for you guys. You know, Jerry did a coaching call this week with the VPs and you know, Jerry's whole thing, Jerry Rosenthal is all about minding your mind. And you know that that's my passion is um, mind stuff. <laughs> but one of the things he said is that you have to speak to doubt and then speak life. He said his words were doubt. I don't accept you. I don't receive you. There is no place for you in my life. So, I mean, you can talk to doubt. You can talk to fear, whatever you want to name it. You speak to it until it has no place here. And then you speak life to yourself and that speaking life looks like you know whatever if you don't know what to say then go look up some affirmations get some self-talk um, get a vision statement you do not even let that come out of your mouth you rebuke it and send it away come on let's go okay now I feel like I'm at church but I did go to church this morning and you know what they talked about at church was the same exact thing that you have to surround yourself with people that are gonna lift you up that are gonna come alongside and are going to support you in what God has called you to do and speak life to you. And if you don't have those kind of people in your life right now, you need to think about the circle that you have and put those kind of people into your circle. You need to ask them to come alongside. Change the people that you're spending the majority of your time with because that has a tremendous effect on your life and your business. So um, anyways, okay, I will stop talking now, Melanie. You have that was awesome. Awesome. Rebecca, Elena, Lauren, you guys are rock stars. So, such great training, such great tips. Bethany, home run. We love you. We love you. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> great job, you guys. All right. Thanks, you guys. All right. Good night. Don't miss next Sunday night. Amy Hazelton. All right. Good night. <laughs>